Well, I love Pancakes Steel Plasky. That's a nice cool. emote there. Uh, anyways, so we're going to look at, at some ult tracking and possibly some ultimate management as well if, you're, uh, if you have any questions regarding that. Uh, so we're not going to go into like DPS-specific plays. Well, I'm not really a qualified DPS coach, am I? Oh man, it's still diamond. He should be able to do it. Some bits, but uh, it's not what I'm going to focus on. Okay, so we have Moira Zen. Interesting combination. Reinhardt McCree. McCree's pretty good on this point, so that's nice. Yeah, this is pretty ash. Yeah, okay. That's a good. good one, actually. And we're going to have Rodog and Hanzo, because I watched the up beforehand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Azari would be so much better with Onza, yeah. <laughs> but they are for Hog. Okay, so one of the things, like, start off the bat, um, your team is going to have um, a small amount of utility, because you have Moira, which is, like, literally the least uh, utility-based healer in the game. So you're going to have a lot of healing in general, which means that um, your tanks will have a fair lot of healing onto it, but not a lot of utility. Uh, but your Moira should get a lot of um, ultimate charge going. Reason being, Moira can work well with tanks, but they don't have illusion to speak with men. So even though the tanks have a fair amount of healing, they won't really get that much damage done. And on top of that, because you have a Rodog instead of a Zarya or a Diva, you're going to naturally just, quote unquote, feed a lot more ult charge and also just have less shielding in general. So in general, your tank should take a bit more damage and your Moira should heal the tanks a lot. So you should have like a lot of ultimate gain in the Moira department and a lot of um, ultimate gain. That makes sense, yeah. That makes sense. We were just playing in Oasis and we Leo was saying he was struggling to push in and we had Zen Moira as well. Um. I mean, if this was a Lucio, it would be better. Or if uh, the Moira was a Mercy, and you just play around with range, like, range poke damage, then you wouldn't need your tank healing as much, as long as they play passively. As Zen Moira is a really hard comp to play around as tank specifically, especially as Reinhardt, because you need a lot more resources. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that. So, so look, when really... would you run a deal like this? Is, is this, a, like, this is obviously not an ideal situation. I would not run this, team. indeed. You would not run this, okay. So No, I wouldn't just he, run... Uh, no I wouldn't run this team, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we did that last game as well. Which so we I guys... wouldn't run this, but like, if you're going to run it, I would say you opt for like mobile tanks, like Winston Diva, ones that can maybe get kills done a bit quicker and that don't need as much resources. Because if you have like a good Winston Diva, it's just way easier to have them set themselves up rather than play with like a good Reinhardt with uh, supports that are not ideal. But in general, I wouldn't really uh, take these two supports as a duo. I also would not play them in a Goats variant, like free free. But yeah, so um, your tanks will probably struggle a bit, but they will, uh, like, your Moira should get a lot of ult charge, and your and the enemy DPS or whoever damages your tank should get a lot of ult charge. And then I'm just going to watch how you and uh, Anzo played out in terms of their tanks. And your Zen is mostly going to be, uh, judging by your comp as well, your Zen should also, also get a fair amount of ult charge, reason being is that you don't really have any flankers, so... Most of the damage will be focused on people up front. So, like, if the enemy has a Genji or a Tracer, you might focus them a bit more with Discord, or you're going to focus the enemy tanks, but you're not really going to Discord an enemy Zenyatta and have your Tracer chase it or something. So, like, your Zenji do a lot of damage on tanks, and most of your DPS will do as well. So, you should have relatively quick ultimate gains. So, they have Doomfist, Reinhardt. Okay, Doomfist. I'm waiting for you to press tab. I walked in front of Shield, unlucky. I'm going to watch in a second. Come on, tab. I should go punch back by Doomfist. I'm lucky, yeah, I saw. Waiting for you to press tab like a good boy. I did that just a moment ago. Okay, now. Um, hello, did someone join or is that the father itself with the Moira? It's, it's a girl, a um, guy, boy. Unlucky. Okay. You're gonna find him annoying. Yeah, I know, I already watched it. But, uh, okay, you guys have basically mirror tank lineup, so it's fine. Uh, they have a drastically different support duo. They have Ana Lucio, so they have a lot of utility, but also a lot of speed boost in their comp, so... Their tanks should theoretically get ult charged before um, your tanks really do. Also because they have a Lucia, they get themselves in position. And they have an Ana, which just gives a lot more utility to the tank lineup. So like, not just raw healing and just push in, but actually like an anti-nade or like an, uh, a double nade if you like hit it on your teammate to get some extra healing done. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know that they have Doomfist. And since you don't have a Zarya bubble, it means that all damage he does, like or most of his damage, cannot be negated through barriers. So their Doomfist should get ult charged relatively quickly just because... Um, in general, like heroes like Winston, Reinhardt, Reg, and Doomfist get their ultimates really quickly because their damage is mostly close quarter brawl and cannot be blocked through barriers. Like a McCree can like shoot a Reinhardt shield, but it's very hard for like Doomfist or Brig to get their damage interfered with shielding. Other than that, um, depending on how the Hunter plays, you can also get it up like sort of quickly, but not super. Um, their team doesn't have damage amplification, so him spamming tanks isn't really an ideal way to gain ult charge. 
but he might just opt for like shooting Rodok from an angle if he has like a safe angle. But it depends on how he plays. So far, he's taken out Moira and you, so he will generally. It seems tend to shoot shooting a what's it called backline or DPS and supports more rather than tank. Okay. Okay, so there, Hans and Doom did a fair amount of work. They're on, I got Nanobus, as you can see, quite quickly. Uh, they're Ryan? Let's see. Should be kind of close to Shatter, but not entirely, because his Nanobus is mostly... Uh, it wasn't really swinging at multiple people. Uh, so you lose your Roadhog. Okay. Mm-hmm. One of the things that you can notice, um, in this case, Lucia's was peeling for the, uh, Ana. But in the other part, where they just walked through the gate there, Lucia was uh, pocketing the Roadhog a lot with speed boost. So in general, um, that means Ana's going to be doing the majority of tank healing, rather than the Lucia, because their Lucia is mostly proc by with either like pocketing Ana or Roadhog. So you expect Ana to get Nanobus quickly, as you can see, just because she'll be doing the majority of tank healing, and their Lucia seems to like either peel or just help specific targets. In this case, it was peeling for Ana, and uh, like 30 seconds prior, it was really speed boosting the Roadhog. Nope. So, um... As we can see now, um, their Ana should get ult charged quite quickly. Uh, they just swapped to Genji, so that's no ult charge there, but their Hunter might get ult charged relatively quickly. And their Roadhog should get ult charged quite quickly. And a bit falling behind in this case to Genji because he just swapped, but otherwise he would get decent ult charge. Uh, their Reinhardt might fall behind a bit, and the Lucian might fall behind a bit. Um, does that make sense or not? Yeah, question. Question. Yeah. Go for it. When you, when you use the term decent, do you talk about like 60 to 80% or. A decent, as in decently quick, or decently amount of uh, old charge. Uh, like, it's a really three. relative term. It's just like uh, it's more like towards ultimate charge gain rather than a certain percentage of ultimate. Mm -hmm. Well, on my way to the point back, we came across a, a nano Reinhardt, so mm -hmm. they currently use nano just now. Indeed. So that, that's already showed that I got it pretty quickly though. Yeah. This is fine. Nadaran should have shattered. Like, he swung at yeah. Moira and someone else. I think in part also the Hanzo. And Reinhardt just came back. So, there's a lot of damage in the tank category. So, I think that Rodok should definitely have his ultimate by now. And the Reinhardt is quite likely to be up there as well. Rodok is self healing. Okay. Nice pick. Nice flash. No clue what this Reinhardt is doing, but sure. Good punishment. Uh, your Roadhog is feeding him. Down by him making so much noise. <laughs> yeah. I was like, where is he? Yeah. Okay, so one of their players just DC'd, and I think it's their Hanzo player. So yeah, Hanzo, yeah. Their Hanzo player has no ult charge right now, and the Genji just swapped, but like died relatively early. Uh, your Roadhog fed a fair amount of ultimate charge. Like, if you just watched or like remember the last couple, uh, like 20 seconds, he like he had, didn't have a Rhino with him, and he did take a fair amount of damage. So, like 500 damage, mostly leaning towards Genji, Ana, and a bit of Hanzo who just DC'd. Okay. Your Hunter's back. Second Nanobus comes out. Okay, so now in a predicament. Uh, they use Lucia drop, but on top of that, your Rodok hooked the enemy uh, in close. He did use a Shatter, so it's Nanobus and two support ults out of the way, but as you can see, in this case it's a Shatter, but normally their Rana would get his ultimate very quickly now, simply because he got Nanobus and pulled in towards two tanks. So he's, like, if he didn't Shatter, he was going to wail away. But yeah, you lose yourself with High Noon. Alright, so right now we're in a situation where you have no more DPS left. Uh, this is you, basically, Chris. And they still have, like, basically everyone left. So one of the things that's going probably going to happen now, especially with the Moira ult active, is that their tanks and uh, DPS will get, a, like, a lot of ult charge just because you don't have any damage to do a backstab, but you still have, like, tanking and healing to sustain for a long period of time. Right, so... Uh, does that make sense? Or mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah. roll kill, and yeah, then you, uh, like, these people really stay alive. Yeah. It's not just that, but, like... um. Let's say if you didn't have supports, basically all damage that the enemy did will like be confirmed to kills instantly. Uh, whereas in this case, your Rodok starts self healing and your Moria starts like ulting the Reinhardt, and every damage they take is still gonna like tick up their ultimate charge, but they're still gonna stay alive. So just because you have no DPS, you can't really win the fight, and because you have like supports and tanks alive, you'll probably sustain through a lot of damage, thus giving them moral charge. But yeah, you used mm -hmm. uh, Moira ulti, Zen ulti was used like just prior, and you used uh, Rodok ultimate, and you used Hanun. Uh, this one just like disconnected, but kind of came back at some point again. Yeah, they use whole hog and shatter and nano boost. Luck, shatter, nano boost, and beach. So yeah. the Genji should have his ultimate, and the Hunter should be coming up. The rest is all offline, basically. I'm getting grouped off. 
Genji disco up, one. Nice uh, okay, Genji's doing some first start. You ran and your uh, Zenyatta doing some work. Lucia. Hello, Crested. Yeah, okay. uh, Crested got like two good kills there. She, she should have. Uh, he already had ultimate, but this is like one of the, the telltale. Unlucky. You killed the Roadhog. Um, your Hanzo, should, like, judging by that, your Reinhardt should have a uh, fair amount, or sorry, your Hanzo probably fed off the Roadhog, and your Roadhog just hooked the enemy Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. Also, like, telltales. Um, usually, if a Hanzo, like, kills a Roadhog, or like a spam hero kills a tank like that, they usually did a lot of damage to him. Yeah, I want to see that. Your Roadhog went from. I just used my ultimate, too. I have 70%, and your Hanzo has it as well again. So Hanzo probably just spammed on the enemy Roadhog, and your Roadhog just hooked up the enemy Ryan, which is like a fuck ton of ult charge. Okay. Their Hanzo should ha definitely have his ult now, because he got like a pick in the fight right on a bit. There's Genji still has blade. Okay, yeah. that's two picks from the Hanzo, and there's a the blade, yeah. Okay, so kill the enemy Ana, that was nice. Alright, so let's. Oh, I want to see press tab again, please. Okay, so here's Hanzo ulti, okay. Uh, so this one just swapped after his blade, no ult charge. This one just uses ultimate, basically. Um, and you. See, what else? What else is Derodog? I mean, he only hooked you off. He didn't really do a lot of damage afterwards, because you can see he got killed basically after you uh, got killed. Or, well, actually, he he, he literally just got the pull effect off on you. The Rodok shouldn't have too much ult charge yet. I'm expecting B drop kind of soon again, though, and maybe Nana Boost. And, like, the other tankles are coming up, but Hanzo was just used. Genji ult, aka what I know, was just used. Uh, those ones have all been slumbering for some time, though. I'm definitely expecting these two. I use. What's it called? Hanzo ult charge. Oh, what we use and... No, 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 we have a lot. Yeah, we only use Hanzo. Yeah. Back. Get one pick, nice. Are you pushing up a full hog? And they use shatter? Oh, that's their Hanzo. Sorry, I might have mistimed it. They also use shatter there if you. Oh, yeah, I, I heard the block, yeah. I heard the block. But they use shatter. Uh, you used full hog, they used Hanzo, you used Trans, okay. The shatter, okay. Nope. It's still good, actually. Chill, 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 chill. Yeah, okay. Uh, so low. Get him. Yeah. Still, uh, still good fight still. still okay, the Hanzo's doing like... On, one of the things we noticed is that their Hanzo's getting a lot of kills on squishies. Like, he's taken out you and Hanzo a fair amount of times, and your Moira. So he's not really... Their Hanzo's not really spamming tanks too much. And because they don't have damage amp, he shouldn't really get his ultimate too quickly. But he should be, like, getting a lot of value normally. Okay, uh, they just swapped the soldier, that's no ult charge again. Uh, this one was just used. This one was just used. Um, did they use whole hog that? I believe not, right? Yeah, I think they did actually. Did they? Okay. I don't, I'm not sure anymore. Quickly rewind. Yeah, there. He said animation. Okay, I'm just gonna watch. That's your whole hog. Oh, okay. Not yet. Not on. No, it's all just normal. That was your own Rodago was ulting. Yeah. yeah. That's there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go to the same thing. Uh, Hanzo just used ultimate, yeah, when the other DPS on. just switched. Um, so by now, these ults are definitely coming online. They haven't used them in so long. Like, Lucio last used it like three minutes ago, basically. You're on a, they're on a, like two minutes ago, and generally Ana farms a lot quicker. And Rodago Ryan are kind of the same story. They haven't used it in ages, so. Like those four ults. Oh, the Reinhardt ult, just sorry, only the Reinhardt ult. Yeah. But like the other ones, they haven't been used in so long. Mm -hmm. That those are definitely coming up, and like even with the Reinhardt ult being used now, um, he didn't use it like a long time prior to that. So still, you get the same thing, where uh, he used it in a long time. Lazy Turtle does a an icy mode. Hello. Uh, question. Yeah. I mean, the um, the ult is also in some extent time based. So yeah. Could you like have a, you know, keeping in mind like, oh, it's been say. 30 seconds, they should have at least this or that. Yeah, one. Uh, usually we do it per team fight, indeed. Um, general rule of thumb there's a like, uh, you have like super quickly charging ultimates. Um, and like the, the what's it called? The margins kind of depend on like team comp and play style and sort of like things like damage amplification or resource management. But in general, uh, most ultimates take about two fights to like grind out. 
and the longer style of ultimate, so like say a Zarya Grafton or Lucia we drop, oftentimes closer towards um, free fights. And then there's a couple of ultimates that farm very quickly. Those are commonly Meteor Strike, uh, Pulse Bomb, uh, and Whole Hog also farms quite quickly. So those like the main thing, and all the other ults generally fall within like around the two fight mark. Okay. If I just go off of memory. But it kind of depends on sure. compositions as well again, because let's say if you have um, Mercy and Yatsa and you're playing Hanzo into an enemy Roadhog, so you get damage boost and he gets discorded. Then you're just going to have your fight basically every every fight. Like yeah. I said, it's dependent on like team comp. Uh, but yeah, like I think the general rule of thumb would be what I just said, but um, always try to like analyze your own team comp and maybe the enemy's team comp and see what resources are being put into. Because let's say if they put a lot of resources into their DPS, then they probably will have DPS ults a lot quicker. In okay. the same way, if they have like uh, a lot of tank resources, they're gonna have their ult a lot quicker. And the same way, um, looking at like tank heroes, if the enemy team has like more tanks, your own tanks will also get more ult because it's like more things for them to fight. Okay, there's the beat drop used. Nano boost was used. Let's both support us from the enemy team out of the way. Now there's the tank ult. Okay, the dies. I think the accurate could keep track of like uh okay nice. Uh their soldiers died twice in a row now at the start of a fight, so he doesn't really have any ult charge yet. Uh the enemy used both supports and I think I didn't see their tank ults being used, but I might be mistaken. Oh they use shatter, okay, nice. Okay, so they just swap some things. Um they swapped the Zen so it's like more damage and more range damage. This one just swapped the tracer. Uh so Hanzo ult should be kinda coming up. Uh and this one should be yeah, kinda coming up. Oh, they use Hanzo, but they literally only have Rota Gold here, basically. This one just swapped. This one just swapped. This one just used. This one just used. And this should be kind of coming up, but it was used like uh, one fight prior to the last one. So it's probably like around the 60-70% mark, but not quite there yet. Uh, one thing that's going to change, though, with their damage amp, um, like, just because he was playing the Lucia around his Rodog so much, he might just like really help his Rodog with damage amp, but for the most part, uh, their Zen will farm like, his own ultimate's a lot quicker than he could as Lucio. But on the other hand, they will not have, like, uh, anything to get their tank uh, ultimate charge, like, going in the same way you can with Lucio's speed boost. Okay. Well, the kid dies first again, that's good. They go left side. Upstairs. I have no clue where this push is going to. Ryan's, Ryan's up here alone. Oh, then, he's done, nice. nice. They use whole hog. Ana gets some healing, but not a great amount. M2 is, I don't know, some really weird things happened here, so it's kind of weird to analyze. Alright. Anyway, so far, so fine. Alright, so, like I said, uh, should be coming up. And should be coming up rest. Okay, they swap back to Lucia. The rest is not in any proximity of being near, basically. Maybe the Ana is like pushing towards the 40 50 again. Russian mm -hmm. Emerald is close. In the same way, you have a lot of ults coming up, though. Especially with Tracer Pulse one, because you should farm this one in this fight as well. Nice awareness. It's okay. I'm, I can turn left. Okay, so you spot them all going down there. Okay. Up, 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 up. Half. Okay, so I charge and I think he hit your backline or something. I think he hit your Roadhog, maybe. Watch again. Or is he just charging into nothing? Okay. You uh, were going on here? Nice. Is this pretty big? Because they kind of had the Nanobus coming up. Oh, they just nanoed Hog, okay. Onto one, Lucia Low. Okay, so uh, let's see. Darren Rodok just got nano boosted, so they will probably have Whole Hawk coming up, basically because he killed Crested and he killed you and he had nano boost on him. So he should have his ult definitely by now because he kind of had it coming up and then he well, got nano boosted as well. well. Actually, a good question. Ult charge is it influenced more by getting kills or by doing damage? Literally doing okay. damage, but uh, in this, in like in most cases, uh, doing damage. Like I'm gonna presume he did like a fair amount of damage, like. Uh, 60. I was 60 HP when he hit me. Yeah, but then you look at your Reinhardt, and he had a Rodok yeah. near him as well. True, yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And you need to also keep in mind every damage that the Rodok, like a bit of damage that Rodok did, got amplified because of uh, Nanobus, which is like a 50% damage boost. So even if he had like 
like a solid right click on the right, like only one right click or something, right? It would have done at least 200 something damage. And then adding your damage is like 300, and then you might have self healed as well. Then we're looking at like at like an instant 40% ultimate charge game basically on a hero that already had it coming up. But, mm -hmm. uh, okay, so there Reinhardt gets a kill. Get, let's get killed though. Huge, winnable, winnable. Okay. Aero actually definitely have his ult now because he got three kills in the last fight and he got nano boost and he healed himself and he already had it coming. Aero should come back with Shatter. Rest should not be online anytime soon though. Okay, that's. I was about to say, like, hooking that extra tank off is like, yoink, 600 HP. <laughs> Alright. They finally got their pulse bomb off three fights. Quality callouts from the quid. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, but they should not have ult coming up yet. Maybe the Reinhardt, yeah. Yeah, that was just really bad for me. I couldn't keep on targeting it in yeah. at all. I think at the end, like, they just got, like, some individual... Like, they got a Shatter off, and then the Tracer got one pick. So that's, like, two down already. They come back with a D.Va instead of Roadhog, it seems, yeah. They use beat drop. He farmed it quite quickly, though. That's impressive, okay. But a lot of hero swaps here. Right, so their Doomfist got two kills, one of which I know Roadhog, so their Doomfist probably has like pushing towards the 50% or 40% ult charge again because he his damage cannot be blocked. And on top of that, like I said, that he farmed a tank. One kill, that's none of us Reinhardt. He's gonna have a shatter soon again. There it is. Because the fight dragged on for a fair amount and like their tanks are fighting your tanks a lot. It's quite evident that, uh, what's it called? That they will farm the ultimates quite quickly. Especially because, like we said, um, you have Moira Zen, so you can't really help your tanks too much, like in terms of utility, whereas they have, like, Lucius people. Unlucky kid. Unlucky kid. <laughs> I'm gonna agree with him on this one now. Okay, but, um, let's see. Crested, like, he charged in and he basically gave a lot of HP to the enemy, like, Ultimate economy, so their diva might have been. It's so fucking unfortunate. Like... Yeah, mid pressing you, I saw. Alright, so they killed their runner, which is good because he had a fair amount of villagers coming up again. Because he killed you and uh, the Roadhog at some point after Shatter. Yeah, that's a, that's what I'm about to say. Like, he basically, um, like, after you, uh, what's it called? After you lost point B, like, basically, he's gonna be like around 40 50 percent ult charge. He got killed instantly as you retreated, and now he got like one kill and some other damage on tanking instantly as a build. That's how quickly he can farm it. It's good you're focusing the healers. Because they might have, what's it called, an ultimate coming up again. And none of us. That's good. Nice shatter. Uh, their Ryan should have his ultimate coming up again. He hit two people with a fire strike, and he hit the Moira one or two swings afterwards, and he had some like early things in the fight. Especially because they will have nano boost soon. I think they're gonna do nano shatter sometime soon. They might have diva bombs like coming up at some point, but it's not entirely sure yet. Okay. That's the shatter of the enemy team. That's the pulse bomb, nice. The Anna grenade, that's the nano boost. That's the diva bomb. And it's unite. I was actually on point with Put a lot of these ones, nice. Uh, did it make sense so far? Like, not just in terms of, like, yeah. damage, but also, like, well, obviously, the whole, like, how much damage is very hard to keep track of while you're in the game. Yeah, it's, I, I, it's I pretty hard to do as Tracer. Pretty, I can predict pretty well how much damage they should have done, mm -hmm. but I can't be as accurate as you are right now, but yeah. seeing Rodok standing here doing 500 damage to Orion or the stuff Yeah, like it's that. like a bit Getting of Getting an idea of the kill fit at every second that someone gets killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I usually, like, look at, um, like, firstly, it's pretty hard to like ill track with Tracer in that sense because like if I'm playing main tank or I'm playing like a backline support it's very easy to see like hey this person is fighting this person this is where resources get put into if you're playing Tracer mm -hmm. it's like always a lot more fractured in a sense you can't really keep track of those things as easily but one of the things I always like try to look out for is uh, like uh, the team comp synergy so like I said if you have like say Mercy Zen and you're playing Hanzo then you're gonna have like double damage amp on your range damage so you're gonna have like a DPS ult a lot quicker but you have a lot less in terms of tank utility because tank basically needs speed boost to get a lot of damage done and they need some sort of support that heals them a fair amount and like with your like Mercy Zen for a support combination you can't really do that so I always look at like the team comp and how it would like shift the ultimate economy in a sense or the ultimate gain of heroes um other things I try to look out for like certain like uh, specific playstyles. So with Lucio, 
Uh, they're always just playing protect the off tank and protect the, the off support a lot. There's also loose that literally play around the majority of the team and start heal amping. So you always try to wanna try to identify how people play. And in the same sense, you can apply similar things to DPS. So um, a Hanzo that's just shooting tanks might not get as many kills, but he will get a lot of uh, ult charge like quicker basically because he's f basically farming like raw damage without getting kills. Um, in terms of tanks, let's see if I can find some similar examples. Um, I mean, in like in a hero like Reinhardt, it's very obvious in like Reinhardt's that shield more, like tend to get their ultimate charge a lot slower. Whereas Reinhardt's that go in a lot more, and especially the one Reinhardt's like that fight the enemy tanks a lot, those like tend to farm their ultimates a lot quicker as well. So those are like uh, hero play styles, if you will, that you can uh, like mm -hmm. uh, see being influenced in terms of ultimate charge. Other things I try to keep in mind are uh, resource management and ultimate management. So, uh, like at some point they were playing this with a Zen, right, and then the Roadhog. If you're uh, if this Zen hook like uh, discords anything the Roadhog is fighting, then the Roadhog will get like a lot more damage done and a lot more ult charge, basically. Mm -hmm. In the same way, like if the enemy Ana keeps Nana boosting to the Reinhardt when she, like your their Reinhardt is close to your tanks, then they're gonna have shatter quite quickly, stuff like that. So I will try to look at like how resources are spread out amongst the team and how ultimates are being used. Does that make sense? Or any further questions? Yeah, or? I mean, yeah, but for now, I don't know if any questions. I I need to get one. <laughs> no steak. No, not steak. Smokes. No, normal smokes. Not, no, not normal smokes. They won't be gory. Oh, that's not gory. <laughs> so you're playing with Ponces and Mr. Reinhardt? Yeah. Just gonna let the banter play out. Uh, playing kind of a mirror of what you had on defense initially, okay? So the Moira again and the Roadhog. It's pretty interesting because Roadhog isn't being played a lot even after his most recent buffs. So I guess this was like just after the Roadhog buffs, or when people are trying things, or. You're only allowed to consume. Yeah, in the so looking at like kind of the same thing, uh, you and Hansu get your ultimates fairly quickly, the Rodok should get it kind of quickly, depending on how the Hansu plays, of course, and your Mar should get him like very quickly because she's just literally pumping out raw healing. Okay, I think I saw Mercy enemy team, I think I saw Doomfist, a Reinhardt, Ana, Roadhog again. Okay, so Hansu, Doomfist, uh, Mercy, Ana, Ryan, Roadhog, okay. Gonna wait for you to press tab again to analyze things a bit quicker. A bit more in detail. Alright, we get one pick there, two picks. Okay, res. <laughs> Getting a lot of damage then. Not gonna comment yet on uh, what's it called? How things are played, I'm just gonna like analyze the comp in a second. It's a good clean fight on your end though, like you just punished Arab extending with Roadhog and Tracer quite well. Alright, uh, let's be a good boy again and rewind up. Alright, so um, once again, a lot of healing on, the, on like tanks, but not really a lot of utility. So I would expect their uh, tanks to get like ultimate charge uh, quicker than yours, definitely, because they have like damage amp possibly on tanks and they have like honor healing. Whereas Moira healing and Zenyang are just like a bit less for tanks in that case. Mm -hmm. um, now we're going to get into some like interesting nitty gritty things. Uh, like I said, Doomfish should get his ult quite quickly, especially because there's like no barrier for you to block his damage with. Uh, Hanzo uh, should get a fairly quick as well in the prevalence of the uh, damage boost. But looking at the nitty gritty of things, we're going to see how they will use Mercy Ult. Because Valkyrie, as you know, it can damage with some heal. And depending on how they use it, uh, it's going to dictate how the ultimate fight will really change. So let's say if they use uh, it defensively. Yeah? One question actually. Uh, in this last fight, for instance, the, the Reinhardt got nano nade, no, not nano, uh, he got naded. naded. And then he got healed by the Mercy. Does that Mercy get extra ult charge then? Yeah. Because just okay, so that Mercy should have a lot more ult charge this fight because she was like healing the Reinhardt for four hundred HP or something um, like that. Yeah, you're looking at like one hundred HPS basically. So it's a significant amount of ult charge definitely. But uh, yeah, their Mercy should get deals with very quickly if, if they combine it with the Ananite. But there's also the possibility where the Ananite just pockets the tanks and the Mercy just pockets the DPS essentially, and then the yeah. Mercy might fly occasionally towards the Ana. But uh, it depends but on how they do fight, it. She was obviously on the Reinhardt the whole time. Yeah. So it's it kind of lab, depends but... on how they play it out. Um, it's not really ideal for them to do so, but if it happened, yeah, if their Mercy keeps, like, healing tanks that are have the uh, Ananade on them, then they will get ult charge quicker. But, uh, just looking at the comp, 
most people, what most people would do is use the Ana to like really heal up the tanks and then use the Mercy to really heal up the DPS there. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, this would actually be a, a fairly decent anti goats comp if you played it like that. Not really 100% optimal, but fairly decent still. But um, I want to get into Mercy Valkyrie a bit because depending on how they use it, it might change the ultimate uh, game of a fight. So, yeah, because the damage boost on the right click, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, Summers, what they do is that they wait for people to be critical before they use uh, Valkyrie. So let's say if their Reinhardt's on critical, uh, their Ana's on crit critical, and their uh, Doomfist is getting low on HP, then they might think like, okay, screw this, I'm popping Valk, I'm keeping everyone alive. Um, so it's like a more defensive Valkyrie. Oftentimes it doesn't give you like any significant ult charge, because the Mercy cannot gain ultimate charge when she's Valking. And in the same way, um, everyone that's being healed up cannot really be healed up as much by the Ana anymore, so the Ana won't get as much ult charge, and on top of that, because she's healing rather than damage amping, no one in the DPS or tank category will get their ultimates quicker. There's also Mercy that uh, really use Valkyrie for a very specific purpose. Uh, you don't really see this, like you sometimes see this with Doomfist who are going deep, but it's most prevalent in Genji's who are using Blade, so uh, you might like sometimes hear the command, let's Valk and Blade, it's like a, a, nano boost, bu a budget nano boost, I suppose, but then in that case you're really popping Valkyrie for one specific pocket, in which case, um, if it's like a a deep, like an ultimate combo, so like Genji Blade and Valkyrie, there won't be any significant ultimate charge gain. But some mercies might push it literally just to push an advantage or to get an advantage. So, um, let, like let's say everyone is full HP, but your their mercy decides like, fuck it, I'm just gonna pop Valkyrie and damage with everyone. Then you'll see a lot quicker uh, ultimate charge gain on basically everyone that's getting nano that's getting nano boosted. And be, like I said, because you have Moira, so like a lot of healing but no real utility to deal with it, your Moira might get her ultimate fairly quickly. And so will your Rodok, but so will they. So it's going to really depend on how they use this uh, Mercy Ultimate. We did it, boys. Yes. Good job. Yeah. If you just give me, let me... One key thing, though, is that you did kill their team fairly quickly, so they shouldn't really have their ultimates coming up quickly yet. I wouldn't like think anyone is above 50%. I would be surprised if they would have three people over the 40% mark right now. Their Mercy might be decently close. Their Ana might be a bit closer, because they died relatively late in the fight. But the Hunter and Doombus have practically no ult charge, and the Ryan didn't really get any damage done. So I'd be looking at those two supports mostly. Okay, now the Doom should have Zoltum coming up because he just farmed the Reinhardt. Nice kill though. Mercy that, nice, get focus. Nice. Okay, so kill the supports, which is pretty funny because now we get into a situation where you basically, you evened out the enemy's ultimate economy. So basically, um, the people in the enemy team that were behind on ultimate charge got their ults this fight and you mostly killed the people that were kind of having a lot of ultimate charge already quite quickly, so... It's gonna be pretty interesting. The enemy's ultimate economy is all, like almost gonna be identical across the board. We're up too close. Alright, be safe is good. Okay, kill the mercy again, that's good. And might not have an ultimate coming up yet, but I would say probably around the 80% mark at least. Schnickety schnappity. Alright, so, oh, they swapped. Uh, I gotta see you press tab again. Yes. So they swapped the Ana to a Brig. Okay, that's not very common, but I guess we're rolling with it. Uh, that means Mercy will now do the majority of the tank healing. Hunter will have to be safe and not take any damage. Doom will have to rely on his self shields. I guess your Brig is just going to aid in the tank healing, or their Brig, sorry, is going to aid in the tank healing of it. But it's going to be like a bit boomer bust. Um, run, like a 2 to 2 comp with Brig is not at all common, but sometimes people use like Brig and then uh, one other healer. To really farm ultimates quickly, because as you know, Brig is not really a consistent healer. She doesn't put out constant healing like all of the other supports, basically. And then you have like any other supports. Sometimes people do with Ana, sometimes people do with Lucio, and I guess in this case with Mercy. The thing is, though, um, like any team comp in 2v2 with Brig has naturally less overall healing. Like if this was a, a, a Zen, they would have a constant healing with Orb. If this was a Moira, constant spam healing. If this was an Ana, a lot of healing in general, all those combos. But since they're playing with Brig, um, it's going to really depend how the fight goes. So if they start to win fights, their Ana starts to, like, let's say the Ana or the Lucio, they're going to start to gain massive ultimate charge because they're doing the majority of the healing. And mm -hmm. if their Brig is finding success in, for example, a Nana boost or a, uh, what's it called? The damages from Mercy. And she ends up, like, living while still doing a lot of healing. They can expect those uh, ultimates to come online practically every fight because uh, if you're running, like, Mercy Zen, you're, like, playing uh, more for, like, the damage amp, like, the range damage, and, like, have some constant healing. But with like the the brick and basically another support uh, duo, if you play it in a two to two, as long as they win fights, they start farting out ults like massive. Because <laughs> this mercy is gonna heal a lot, and if this brick like never really dies, 
she's going to have a lot of ultras because there's no one else like taking her healing charge away, if you will. Does that make sense or not really? Yeah, kind of. Right. Kinda? Well, I was missed a part of the conversation because it was, it was kind of distracting. I'm okay. Uh, so basically, uh, the enemy swapped the Arna over to a brig, right? Yeah. They're, so they're gonna have a lot of inspire area of effect healing. Um, well, in a sense, um, so like if you have brig, you don't really have consistent healing. Like a loose, you can always like put heal or on. A Zen can always put an orb on. On or Mara can always heal all that good stuff, right? So because mm -hmm. you're playing uh, two healer setup, which is basically like two, two, two normal stuff, but they're playing it with a brig, that means their healing will be inconsistent. So in a sense. Uh, which whatever, whatever like other support they put besides this brig is gonna get their ultimates a lot quicker, because basically because the brig is not healing consistently, the mercy will heal a lot more. The possible Lucia if they play Lucia will heal a lot more, and so will the Ana, right? Yeah. So as long as these guys start to win fights, um, the other support should really get their ultimates practically every fight, because they'll be doing the vast majority of the healing. And if they keep winning fights, then their brig will probably get some damage and some inspired them. So as long as they win fights. Their support duo, whichever duo it is with the brig, will get their ultimate practically every fight. Because in this composition where it's like really boomer bust, because they don't have consistent healing, uh, it's really going to matter on whether they, whether they win or lose fights. So as long as they keep winning fights, expect them to have ultimates practically every fight. And as long as they lose it, they're not going to farm their ults quickly at all. Then we're looking at like free fight for ultimate. Nice. Oh, Holy Jesus. Um, so Hoag was used, Valkyrie was used, and Doom was ulti. Okay. I hope that analysis on break in like two to two comps makes some sense. So you used um, Shatter, this Moira ulti, and they used uh, Doomfist, Valkyrie, and Hohog was using the rest. I can see Brick should not have it yet because she died. Hanzo's being like you kept the Hanzo busy for a long time, so the Hanzo got very little damage done. And he also died. Yeah, but he might have it at some point because he hadn't used it in some time. Looking forward to the Rhine Shatter again, basically. Yeah, they used Valk, they used Hohog. And you killed their brig quite early when she was flanking. So they're playing it in a very weird manner where their brig is probably trying to flank your back one. So she will not get as much ult charge if they continue to do this, where the brig flanks like a complete maniac. Yeah, wonderful. Happens all the way up to GM. Top 500 even. This is nice. Nice, yeah. The Mercy's death is really good. He's not enough because he's healing. Hey, okay, both Dragon Ults get used. You get joined by Doomfist. What? Hold up, I gotta see this again. Uh, okay, so you killed the Mercy, which is all good. It's really crucial, actually. Hanzo Ults get exchanged. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. He just literally punched you into the Dragon at, like, at a rate of damage which you cannot heal up. Interesting. They still one up here, though. Equal. Cool. Oh, nee. Sorry? There was an Onu. Yeah. Okay. So their Brig died early again, didn't really get any healing them. Their Mercy died. Their Hanzo got a lot of damage, and especially on your Rodak and your uh, Granite at the end, so they should have his ultimate quite quickly. Especially, like, you lacked the Moira at the end there. Uh, they didn't have Mercy. Uh, and the Doombus got, like, some damage, but mostly the Hanzo did a lot of work here, and the Brig was practically out of the fight again for the most part. Interesting notes. We're not going to bit of damage him, but not really too significant, but he might have healed himself up a bit more. Unlucky. Or is okay, yeah. She doesn't have a mercy though, so it's going to be interesting damage gain. Get one kill, nice. Hello, Brig. How are you doing today? What the hell? Okay, so you kill it up, it's good, and you use your whole arc. Okay. Yeah, shots are okay. Is that. <laughs> Hello, Brig, how are you today? Okay, so there I can see, like, they use Hans ult again because he probably shot at the enemy tanks. Or at your tanks, sorry, in the last fight. And the Mercy activates Valk, okay. Unlucky. What will you swap to? What will you stay? Okay, go Hanzo. Mm. Once again, a bit of a weird team comp because you have like two long range heroes. Okay, now you swap to Mercy. This is actually much better. Um, so now as you can see, 
your like your fire is gonna gain your ult charge quite quickly, and depending on how you play, if you like start to spam down tanks, you should get your ultimates fairly quickly as well with the Zen Discord Orb. If you opt to like outplay your DPS, uh, you will not get your ultimate as quickly. But as long as you keep like actually finding those picks and those kills, then it's like all fine, of course. Wondering to see what you'll do. But yeah, now you have like a full uh, range damage poke comp with Roadhog, double damage amp, and double long range. They're around your shadow, use trans, that's good. Oh, I got no right hard. Doom is near, yeah. Did it kill your Zen? Uh, they're around, it's back in the fight. He just used shadow though. Okay, so their Hanzo might be fairly. Yeah, their Hanzo should have ultimate like, coming up again. Saying 80% mark. <laughs> Definitely by now. Uh, their message is Valkyrie. They swap back to Ana, so their Ana should not have any ult charge really yet. They already got like a bit of damage, and the Doomfist got a bit of damage in one kill. So I would say maybe Doomfist ult, definitely Hanzo. Ult. Fucking kid again. <laughs> That's yeah. fine. Unlucky. So uh, I know, remember definitely Hanzo. Fuck fuck game this is. Unlucky. Welcome, Crested. Yeah, we oh yeah, it. definitely Hanzo ult. Quite possibly Doomfist ult. Uh, Mercy was just used. Rhino ult was just used. Uh, Nana boost. Probably not because it's his first fight on Ana and Rodox ultimate might be coming up again because he hasn't used it in a while either. Oh, uh, you have a Diva now? Is that Rodox? That's good. This is because now you should. Okay. Unlucky that he instantly feeds, but in theory, their Hanzo and Rodox should get their ultimates uh, slower now unless the Diva gets hooked or focused down. Or, it, like in this case, just flies up to a Hanzo without abilities and is then DMAC. Kill the Rana, that's good. Got slapped. Killed Doomfist, nice. Manibus gets used. Fuck, we don't. Their Ryan should have ultimate coming up again now because he did get the Nanabust and he did like land a charge as well, it sounded. There's the Hanzo like we said. Okay, I use Valkyrie, this is good. Let's see what your Mercy does here. I have no clue what your Mercy is doing with her Valkyrie. Ah, she resists, that explains. So this is like, uh, in this case, you don't get ultra, but this, in this case, you can see damage amp, so. We'll get ult charge quicker. You should get it if you uh, if your dragon expires, and so should the Reinhardt and whoever else is alive. It's like a more aggressive use of Valkyrie, if you will. Nice, yeah, right now we're definitely looking um, at a possible whole hog, a possible Doomfist ult, and a possible Shatter. Rest should not be there yet. Farming Rodox is good. And they just swapped the Junkrat I saw on top. Obviously. Yeah, it's Junkrat instead of. Okay, swap again. There's a Shatter, and the Rodok should have his ultimate by now. Reason being, uh, he hooked your Rhino. Like, you already had some ult charge, he hooked your Rhino, which your Diva did not Matrix, and he just hooked your Diva that was Discord, so it's a lot of damage, and he healed himself up here. Um, they should have his thingy coming up. You get the pick on Hanzo. Use Valkyrie there again. A Hawk gets used, like we said. So you're just farming Rodok like a good boy. Okay, so you have two ults there that are being used, it's fine. Nanabus gets used again. Okay, so let's look at some things. Um, they should definitely have their DPS and their tank ults coming up by now. Reason being, uh, they use Valkyrie. So they probably have like a lot of healing done or a lot of damage amp done on the Junkrat and Hanzo, we were already spam heavy heroes. Um, on top of that, uh, the Ana did get the Nanobus off on the Ana who landed one charge, so that's literally a Nanobus that charges 50% ult charge and then like one swing at the end makes it 60 essentially. The Ana should have his ultimate coming up by now, uh, they just used whole hog I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Hanzo died so he can use his ultimate and Junkrat tire should be coming up because he was alive for this entire thing. That's a good shatter though. Ryan, Ryan. Good place to start. Nice pick. Hulk, 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 Hulk. And there's a Junker Tire. This is clutch healing on Matrix. Good focus on the Mercy though. Nice, okay. And that's how you win the fight. Let's go, dude. Let's go, dude. Any questions or not really? I mean, it's mostly 
just stating yeah like things like the damage people are doing in the middle of the fight it's hard to keep track of them, especially as a dps yeah like you mostly focus on the people you're shooting at and not the, what they are shooting at especially if you're playing tracer and you're sitting around like I would say if you're like a Widowmaker, let's say a McCree is like really safely inserted either in the back or like at the core, yeah, it's much I easier to keep like, track of. If you don't mind waiting, a... yeah, well, uh, I've got a vault from today where I can vault as well. I was also really uh, shot calling or old calling that fight. Yeah, ultimate tracking, yeah. And uh, I was playing Ash, and you could al you can already tell the difference because I feel like I was doing so much better that game right. than this game. Um, I don't really have too much time because I'm going to be subbing in a tournament from an old teammate. In like half an hour, so I don't have that much time. But we could definitely like post it and just keep doing it. Oh, I have a question. Yes, go for it. Why is Chris so good at this game? Uh, <laughs> so you know, there's this thing called a, a gaming chair, and Chris has acquired one of those. It instantly oh! boosted him from a, from gold to a master's peak. I'll have you know. And and it's called uh, like a good mouse. Chris has like uh, several mouses he uh, he still has, and uh... yeah. Not uses. <laughs> One mouse for every hero. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I use a different. I do use the. I use the Steel Series for Hanzo and the Racer for Tracer. <laughs> but I'm already Tracer. And then I use the Kinzu for Genigu. Get out of my game, weebs. <laughs> and, I, and, I, uh... I use, and if I ever play Mercy, I use a Trust Mouse. Yeah. I just I I use my tra trackpad. Also, Plosky, when spraying, yeah, when spraying does it give you twenty percent ult charge. Uh, it's very similar to saying we win these when you're playing a series in a tournament. It increases your chances. Yeah. Yeah, saying it's winnable we win makes your <laughs> winnable <laughs> makes your game twenty percent more winnable. Yeah. <laughs> I use that fact quite a lot. I, I say winnable quite a lot and it works. Yeah, it was such here. a horrible game, by the way, Chris. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, especially that kid. I mean, that oh, one kid was annoying, but also, so like, in terms of, like, uh, team composition, uh, the fact, like, like, the staying with the kid, the fact that he played Moira and, like, such ill suited composition was just, like, not favorable at all. So like, literally, the layer. best thing, like, um, the best thing that one person did was play Mercy when you had Fire Mercy, and he probably didn't do it for like, hey, this works really well with the Sen and the Hunter, it's like, literally just Fire Mercy. The Rodak was a bit of like an off pick, but at least he was like, you know, he was at least landing his hooks and whatnot, so like, as long as he like does his job, and he gets his picks, I would say it can work, yeah, but it was just such an off pick. It didn't really matter much, because the enemy team was also running in Hog. Yeah, I mean, in general, I would still run uh, like Zarya or Diva over Hog there, but as long yes. as it works, it's fine. Uh, but Please. any further questions from you guys, then, or not really? No. Nope. I don't know, you guys only joined later. Uh, Plosky, do you have any further uh, questions? or? Not this time, because mid your talk, I got a phone call from my sister. Unlucky. I'll just uh, upload your uh, recording then.